gonna be a Sunday, Sunday, Sunday on Twitch TV. Get ready for the explosively mediocre event of your dull life. Two normal dudes. Normal? What the fuck you mean? One immaculate as fuck. We'll face off. What about me? The other, a middle-aged man in his 20s with crippling depression. In a gladiator-style event that will chap your nipples, these warriors will be competing in 10 rounds. Ten rounds? Fuck that. I ain't got time for that shit. We're doing three rounds. You guys are lucky you're getting that. Of high-octane energy, where the loser will have to do something embarrassing, and we all get to watch. Have your eyebrows singed off. Sunday, 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 September 29th. Yeah, that's really not going to work for me. Be there or be Ted. Oh. Ted. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck is that shit? I am your shit. You are so handsome and beautiful and smart and tall and wealthy and smart and beautiful and handsome and I would give you that good sub. So happy with myself. Boom! What's going on, everybody? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Booty and Friends. We are missing uh, Yeti because he fucking sucks and at the last minute no show. I hope that he stops by chat and is like, hey, I hate your face. And blah, 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 blah. So uh, anyway, long story short, Yeti can't make it. So we have myself, the Booty Messiah. We have Ted Farkas and we have a special guest this week, Doc Skills. Doc, how are hey. you? Good, sir. I am quite good, man. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm immaculate as fuck. Uh, well, Ted, how are you with your one hundred dollar braille <sighs> shirt? Uh, uh, dude, you know, just kind of roll out of bed and feel good. <laughs> oh. Uh, so for those that don't understand the format of this, it's actually just kind of like uh, a tip for tat. Like we basically talk about the games that we've been playing, some of the games that are coming out pretty soon that we uh, are excited about. Athena might make an appearance. Uh, you know, so. I'll just kind of flow right into it, man. Monster Hunter World, Ted, you've been playing a lot of it. What do you think of the game so far? Um, I think uh, you should have, like, a phone ready by you uh, to look up stuff. Um, they do – they give you a lot of information. There's a lot to read, but they don't seem to really help you connect the dots. So, like, a lot of the time I feel like I'm just – compl. Sorry, my my vector image took me off. My, why are my eyes so beady in that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, what you staring at? Essay? It's like, fuck you. Um, that's me. Looks like, um, when he, looks so cute. That's because when he took it to the, uh, uh, you know, the the guy who did it, he was like, if for five extra dollies, we'll make him look a little bit less rapey. And he was like, how much <laughs> if I give you ten to make him more rapey? More. <laughs> no, you, you guys, you guys did well. Thank you. Over here with your Thanos looking ass with the beautiful shading and shit. <laughs> I got, I I got... <laughs> Anyway, so so the uh, the game's fun. I you have to get to a certain point where you're just going out and you're collecting resources to craft better gear, and then they give you difficult bosses and stuff. I haven't hit any elder dragons, I haven't hit anything insane yet, but I'm starting to get to the point where it's easier to jump in and out with friends or random people. That being said, I would definitely have something close by because they give you a lot of information. It's hard to connect dots. But then once the dots start to settle in, you're like, oh, shit, now I know how to play the game. Took me, <laughs> I don't know how many hours I put in, but I'm going to say at least 20 hours to figure out, just to get a basic idea of the game. There's a lot in the game. A lot in the game. I haven't even scratched the surface. I'm still killing basic bitches. That's, what I, that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. Does it seem like repetitive to you? Because like like I was saying about Dauntless, because I played a Monster Hunter S game called Dauntless, and it just seemed like to me like the first couple hours is really fun, but then for me, I just felt like the next higher tier of monsters was just like okay, a couple more mechanics, uh, a reshade instead of like a blue wolf, you're killing a red wolf, or instead of like a, is that how Monster Hunter feels, or does it does it have a varied variety of 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 like monsters that you're fighting? I 
I just hit the quest where I had to search for a mutated uh, dragon. I'm not going to ruin it, but you have to search for this new dragon. I watched someone who's way higher than me at the game, and none of the like. No, I've never seen the dragons are beautiful. They're like colorful. They're on fire. They're like all this shit. So, um, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't hit that part where I'm. Like I said, I'm killing basic bitches. It doesn't feel repetitive at all. How it's many hours fun. have you put in so far? Uh, let me look it up. Because I feel like you played it for a couple streams. Like you at least should have like what twenty hours in. Stream Steam. Because every time I've watched you play it, you've been killing Diablos. Every time I've watched Lon play it, you've been killing Diablos. I every had time. to, I had to kill them because I needed uh, the, the first off that boss is a bag of dicks. Um, Fair enough. So I think we failed once. I was pretty drunk. Um, I've put in that thirty-one awesome. hours. 31 hours so far, and yeah. it still seems like fresh and new to you? It's still very fresh, very new. I still am lost. Um, I, I recommend it. If you got 60 bucks and you're looking for something that has a lot of content, it's got content. So, yeah. Speaking of, Doc, I know that you've been playing a lot of Diablo recently. Is there a new season, or what's yeah, the so sudden influx? I, I caught Diablo uh, halfway through a season, so it's season 14 right now, and it's just been a good one. It's been what I've been playing as a filler while I've been waiting to get something else online, uh, which big, you know, coming up. But, yeah, Diablo w probably wasn't my best uh, bet. It's been fun. I get to play with some friends, which is always good. But nothing in particular about it. I, I hit the season in mid-stride. Nothing really to offer except banter and uh whatever in it but it's it's been a filler waiting for the uh dnd to start so uh, can, can you help me understand this though because like i've actually never played diablo 3 because i'm not really m into those hack and slash type games like what's the mystique about it what's the intrigue because like why would i sat like sit there and like build myself up only to have it reset next season like what's the what's the point if you don't want me asking well, so the seasons are optional, right? There, there are, uh, there, there is a persistent world where everything goes that uh, you don't have to do the season. The season is about the fact that you kind of cap out, and when you cap out, what are you gonna do? But uh, just like a lot of those games, you go in, you try and better yourself. You're starting from scratch. You get enough to get more. Uh, challenge yourself always and try and climb. That's the whole point of it, and it's all about random number generation and, and whether the uh, the right drop falls for you. So it's about that climb. And then when you get, it gets boring to try and get from a greater rift 100 to a 101, and you're pulling it off by a tenth of a second or something. So that's the, that's the beauty of the game. It's also the reason for the seasons, because at some point it just gets to be a mire. Um, do you play hardcore or do you play softcore? I, I have played both. I prefer playing the soft core mostly because, yeah, thanks. Is that what it's called? No, it's just called regular. Oh, okay. Yeah, we call it soft core. <laughs> soft core. We call it soft core. I, the appeal in that game for me is hardcore. Uh, line is the same way. Uh, most of my friends are the same way. We like we like the idea that if you die, you lose everything. Kind of, it it adds it adds a really difficult like it adds another element to the whole experience Crystal. like one and done that's it you know it so does but here's the, the the reason that i don't do it more and path of exile same story uh what was it um ah his one of the big guys who does a lot of diablo stuff whose name quinn will come to me here in a second quinn uh lost his guy because of a network error like, mm -hmm. I love the fact that I could die if it were my fault, and that'd be the end of that character. But I've lost too many progression guys to something like computer shut down, kid puked, uh, <laughs> you name it, right? I mean, and, and, and I, that being a dad has ruined my gaming life. It's whatever, <laughs> but uh, I can't play the way I used to anymore. Tell me how you really feel. Uh, so I stopped before I said the part I really feel. <laughs> you might be watching. No, oh my god. No, the reason I ask is because I know that uh, Ted actually likes playing Path of Exile, and I, isn't it like very similar, if not like I, I identical? Um, it has the, only the only thing identical to it is the fact that you are 
in an ARPG and you're you're doing you're essentially dungeon crawling. But there's there's a lot of things different with that game. I also played Diablo three. Uh, I could pull up how many hours I have. I have an insane amount of like it's disgusting how many hours I put into Diablo. I played Diablo three when it released. I went yep. to I went to SG Valor's house for three days, thrice days, and got six hours of sleep. Three. Why? Why? Like no no offense. Like it from, is from a guy from, from a guy who was, didn't play Diablo. I, I was I really I amped. Diablo two and like there's a lot of people who are like there's a cult following for Diablo two. It, like when right. Diablo three came out, they could like just all consecutively just lost their shit. But for me, I'm just kind of like, is it the story? I don't I don't get it. Like what's the what's the draw? It was. It was. It was. One had story. Two had a little bit of story. Three, there is technically story. Their story it got better. They really fucked up Diablo three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> at the big. Be- at the beginning, they really dicked it up. I mean, it was the there. There was a sense of there was a difficulty in when it began. Like, uh, we played for three days. We hit Act three. Um, I, I'm gonna say expert was the level. It wasn't legendary, and we were in the one percent master or something right yeah we we were on the third difficulty rerunning stuff and we were in the one percent of characters like that's how hard the game was uh Kriparian, he got famous because he beat he was the first one to beat diablo on legendary and hardcore like like he instantly got famous for just being the first one to do it like that's how hard the game was and then they started rolling back some nerfs and then they decided to stop listening to us and work on the real money auction house and then there was a period of like eight months where the game was just complete utter crap. And then they decided to roll out greater rifts and all that stuff. And then the game got better. And then, right. you know, does the, does the game still offer that real money auction house? No, no, that they got rid of it. That, that was, was a bad me. idea. I was actually going to ask people's opinion on that. In my opinion, real money auction house in Diablo three may very well have been the worst idea in gaming. Except it was also the greatest idea because if you got lucky and got a legendary earlier, I knew some friends that still have money in their wallet from selling uh, uh, items. Really? Oh, yeah. they they had they had a lot of time on their hands, which fucked them, and they could just farm stuff. Yeah, they got this shield and sold it for two hundred fifty bucks. Someone bought something for two hundred fifty dollars. It was the max you could sell something for. Mm-hmm. Well, that reminds me of like PUBG when PUBG first came out. Like there was like a skirt or something. My buddy got a skirt from like a yeah. random crate, and he put it on the Steam uh, store for like three hundred dollars, yep. and it sold. Yep, he went right. and bought like Witcher three. He bought like I, I just thought to myself like, th- that's crazy to me that we live in a world where you can sell a fucking like Digital made item. up skirt and that's, for three hundred dollars that-, that you could actually buy real shit with that like. That's quality Bob Ross esque painting prices for a skirt. <laughs> People love my art, all right. Ted, Ted Farkas's art shop is going to be up soon. Okay. Oh, did you ask him how drunk he was when he made that purchase? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was. This is the best no. part. Oh, Gosh, just jealous of my my technique. Hey, I'm I'm just I'm I've so never odd. sold anything that I've made for three hundred dollars. <laughs> so yes, you know what I mean. I'm I'm just jealous. Um, no, that's that's interesting because uh, I, I'm, I'm if someone asks me like for me, I love old World of Warcraft classic to about uh, midway through Wrath, like Old War and Wrath was when I thought, wow, was amazing. Um, after that same game, different, like the way I would describe it is like different uh, <laughs> trajectory and the game. Ted's art is great, says Raven. <laughs> and the trajectory of the game just like has never been the same for me personally. So it's funny because I, I tell people like I love World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft always holds a place in my heart, but I haven't played the game in like five years. So when I ask people like, oh, you know, what's the difference between Diablo 3 and Diablo 2? And like some people are getting really hyped about a Diablo 2 announcement, like where they're going to remaster Diablo 2. And I'm just kind of like, well, what's the difference between Diablo 2? I thought 2 they were making a 4. I thought they were doing Thought they were doing two projects. They're doing a four, and they're adding on. Maybe they're doing a remaster of two. I, I don't know. I, I, I could see that happening. I mean, but uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like I, I can sit there and I can tell you exactly what the 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 business style and the story and just like the overall path that World of Warcraft had up until a certain point when that actually shifted, and that's what ruined the game for me. So I, I just like always like to see like uh, how other people feel about other Blizzard games. Well, there's like, especially there's like, like twenty years between two and three though. So like I mean 
Yeah, true. It's <laughs> same with, with StarCraft, right? Like you had Brood uh, War, and then like 15 years later, you had StarCraft Two: Wings of Liberty. Uh, yeah, and they they just commissioned that the decommissioned that game, Brood War, like what, like five years ago? Like they stopped doing like tournaments and stuff in Korea. Right. Ryan used to watch that stuff. It's kind of well, that's that's because StarCraft Two came out, right? Uh, no, no, no. Like StarCraft Two came out, and they were still holding Brood War tournaments. Right. It, it has such a following that StarCraft II did nothing to replace it for a long yeah. time. Yep. Yeah. They, they had to tell everyone, all right, it's time. We're, we're going to go to StarCraft II now because I guess StarCraft II wasn't doing that well. So then once they pumped all the Korean pros into it, then it took off. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm sorry. I didn't know what you're doing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> no, she wanted to come up and get petted. So Fair enough. Right. No, but it's funny that we're talking about, like, so I, I wasn't, I didn't think that the conversation would kind of lean towards, like, primarily Blizzard games, but, uh, I mean, speaking of them as a company, they, they hold a warm place in my heart, specifically for me personally, World of Warcraft and StarCraft. I've never played Overwatch, and I've never even touched Diablo 3. Neither one kind of, like, interests me. But, uh, I, I mean, with BlizzCon kind of, like, in the horizon, it's actually in the same month as TwitchCon, I believe, either in, in yeah. October or in November, I mean, what are some things that you'd like to see from Blizzard? Like maybe a new Diablo 4, maybe another Diablo expansion, maybe something Overwatch related? Would you like to see like a new IP? Can they handle a new IP right now? I mean, I between like everything so. they have? I, I'll i tell you what I'm afraid of seeing. I'll, I'll be honest. Like uh, StarCraft is another game deep in my heart love that one too right that was that i probably got more hours on it than i do diablo and that's saying something that said like i would hate to see too many more of the destinies and the call of duty three uh, uh black ops three where they're doing somebody else's ip and they're just pushing it like I, those two they're an okay fit i get it um they're they're pushing the Hearthstone esque like card game, and that's cool. It's a different uh, genre, you know, a different area than me. But I get it; it's a good model. But keep bringing in those third party and fourth party systems and just trying to get them into the battle net. It's not that great of a do system they, for they, a launch. Do they have? Do they have even say in that though? I mean, because like Activision owns them, they can pretty much yeah. say like. Yeah, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be shitting on Blizzard, right? It's not their decision. It's Activision's. But I just hate to see Battle.net trying to become a really cheap version of Steam. Of so. Steam, exactly. No, it makes sense to me because you can't. I, I I feel what you're trying to say and what you're saying. It, I don't know. I I I can full heartedly tell you that like one of the reasons I kind of drifted a part of World of Warcraft was when Activision made that Blizzard purchase, and that was like at, at the height of WoW during uh lich king so i mean i i feel you on that like once that happened i feel like the directions of the games that they made making don't get me wrong i think blizzard is one of if not the premier gaming studio creator whatever you know what i mean like oh, i i have yeah, one no place in my heart for blizzard but they they've been starting to have like a a, a pinch of ea if i if i could be honest with you like think about yeah. hearthstone think about overwatch Think about Heroes of the Storm. I mean, it's it's all this like, you know, how can we push purchases after an initial sale? And I get it. In today's age, gaming companies need to make money. But at the same time, it's like, dude, I just fucking miss the days where I bought a game and you'd have to hit an achievement in the game to unlock a character instead of just buying it. Like, right. Like old Mortal Kombat was the shit compared to what I what I'm seeing nowadays. Like where the, where a character was blacked out, but if you if you beat so and so, you got him. Like that was dope. Nowadays it's like you got ten extra bucks. Like why the fuck wasn't this character in when I purchased the game from the beginning? Why do I have to buy the DLC? The 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 perfect in my opinion, the game that did it the best for DLC is Witcher Three. Those are like almost standalone well, games and then it's it's that's almost like fallout as well you buy new vague wait, was it new vegas and then you had dlc as well you just added on to the story exactly. you basically sold them a, 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 a half a game yeah you know I i'll go with another one who had it right and then just decided not making enough money or whatever was PUBG way back right when they first came out the only thing you could purchase was like different clothes and stuff. You couldn't change your guns, you couldn't change your skins, you couldn't change whatever. And nothing was a bigger debacle 
than when they they brought in the weapon skins and one of the rifles got like 0.3 faster reload or something like that. Uh, if you put that skin uh, I on. didn't even hear about Holy that. Holy cow. Yeah, I, I, I always thought that cosmetic was the way to go. As long as it doesn't, like, I think skins yeah. and stuff like that is fine. Like, I, I personally, I don't give a shit. For me as a gamer, I've never been enticed by skins. Like, I've never seen someone with a skin or with a, a loadout and be like, oh man, I want to look like that. I've never given a shit about that. For me, it was always like, Am I getting the value for my money in the game experience? And if a game is free to play like League of Legends and stuff like that, and it has an avenue to where I can acquire anything for the most part for free, I can get champions or what have you if I play the game enough, or if I don't have as much time, I can purchase them. I'm cool with that. But what I don't like is games where it's like, no offense, but Fortnite's Battle Pass. No one can tell me that if you buy the Battle Pass, versus not buying the battle pass. I understand that it's cosmetic and all that stuff, but it's more than that because you also get the levels, you get like boosted XP for you and your friends. It's It, it does offer like a little bit more. Now it doesn't affect your gameplay, but it's essentially like <laughs> the bare minimums versus like all these perks, all these like having the battle pass is now the minimums for that game in my opinion. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to backtrack, but I, to answer your question, like what do I want to hear from Blizzard? Yes. I think the only thing that could make me, I, I'm, I'm the same way. It has a special place in my heart. I have nights where like I smell like a chicken pot pie, and I'm like, oh man, I remember when I was fucking running Karazhan, watching Scrubs at like 3 a.m. in the morning. Like, like that is like the peak of my life so far. Like that's where I peaked. But like, um, if they if they just started releasing story driven games, like they obviously have their hold on and on on multiplayer games. You got. Heroes of the Storm, which was a flop. You got Diablo, which is still multiplayer, but yet single player. You got you got World of Warcraft, which is Bay. You know, Squad Fam, all that shit. And then you have um, Overwatch, guess, is just killing it right now. Well, uh, are they? Are they coming back? Because I, I thought they were. I thought they were having some issues with their tournaments. Like it's they're just fighting that, hard. Well, are they? They're fighting. They're, I mean, they're, Blizzard is doing everything they can to pump more into it. They're doing crosses. They're doing whatever, but. Like, really, does it come down to is it a great esport game? No, uh, no, it it's, not, so, it's not fun to watch. There's too that, much that going doesn't on. Matter. For me, some of the funnest games that I play, I would not watch someone else play. Like, I love Seven Days to Die. I love playing Seven Days to Die. I hate watching Seven Days to Die. I can't do it. I'd rather play it. I could watch it if I'm playing it. Same thing with World of Warcraft. I could play World of Warcraft for hours on end, but I could not give a shit less watching Mythic Plus or watching some other dude raid. I want to do well, that they shit. Were, but they've been trying to sell Overwatch as an esport. Right. right. I can okay. okay. I hate League of Legends. I think that community is an awful, awful community. But I can watch League of Legends. Yeah, I know what's going ability. on. I, I can see what's going on, and I can watch it. And I, I could sit there for an hour and watch it, and watch a tournament, and watch finals, and all that crap. Uh, Overwatch is just kind of but like. That, but does that tell you a success of like a game if whether no. or not it's quote unquote esports ready? But I'm saying, no. if they're, but they're trying to sell it as esport ready though. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. They're not trying to sell it to everyone. Everyone, come play. Let's have fun. They're like, we want. We want uh, a stake in the esport community. We want a whole international sporting events, and it's like, well, no one wants to watch it. So, do you, do you think that's an inherently flawed or a pro way to look at it? For me personally, I think it's like we have too many games. So, if you can play a game casually, then you can switch from game to game. And like, I can play a little bit of PUBG, a little bit of Fortnite. Maybe I go to Overwatch, whatever. But what, but I find what's happening now is, especially with like League of Legends, like the skill cap is so high. And like they're making it so competitive that they, they they make it so like you can't really play other games. Like if you play Fortnite really really well, chances are you're not playing PUBG. And if you're playing PUBG really really well and you're streaming it, chances are you're not playing Fortnite. Like if you see Shroud, for instance, a prime example. If he plays Fortnite, he's getting like ten thousand people. He's not winning really that many games. He plays PUBG, he's getting forty fifty thousand viewers killing it, right? So yeah. I, I'm, to my extent, it's like I, I don't really think. Being quote unquote esports or competitive or anything like that really attracts other people to the game. I think if your game is fun and enjoyable, then that's what's going to attract people to the game. All the other other things like League of Legends is very fun to watch, and I can watch League of Legends. 
but I have not played League of Legends for exactly the purposes that you were saying. The community is trash. This, like, it's too competitive. If you do one bad thing, like everyone starts shitting on you. It's just like, okay, it's not fun. I'm good. I'm not even going to play that game, right? It's really fun to watch, and I'm sure the esports aspect of it is there. But for me personally, I can't get into a game where I have to be like, bunghole, hole balls to the walls. If you make one fucking mistake, you're, 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 you're done. You know what I mean? It's just... Yeah. I, it's not fun to me. And Overwatch might not be like this amazing visual spectacle for us to watch because there's too much shit going on. But from what I hear people talk about Overwatch, they talk about how fun the game is. They love like, oh man, this the, the map selection is good. The, the, the characters are good. Maybe they're not happy about the fucking hamster dude. But overall, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't really heard. <laughs> listen, I hear people shit on PUBG and I hear people shit on Fortnite. I don't really hear people shit on Overwatch. No, I, I just heard they're having some issues with their tournaments. Some It was correlating with Fortnite. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm speaking from like an article I heard from someone else. Right. Like, I, I haven't played Overwatch in forever since the free weekend where they introduced it or whatever was probably the last time yeah. I played it. And it was fun. And there was a competing one from the people who made Borderlands that I actually enjoyed more. But one of them had the power of Blizzard behind them and one of them had a lesser studio. And so the one that took off and the other one just shut their doors and what have you. Um, and, it, and again, as far as which one's watchable, which one's not, whether an eSport is really going to make it, if you look at the eSport that actually probably drew people to it was StarCraft, right? Because here was this thing that almost yeah. was on the brink. I could, I could oh, sorry, not to interrupt you. I can no. watch StarCraft. I can watch StarCraft. StarCraft all is, dude, when, when Wings of Liberty came out, I mean, I was that was probably the first time in my life where I was like, dude, esports are the shit. I could watch right. StarCraft <laughs> competitive for hours. Exactly. And that's, I think that when you're a game executive and you're shilling out all this money to make a game, you're looking to try and recreate one of two scenarios that has made a lot of money for the people who did it, right? One of them is you go for the World of Warcraft subscription service to play because they made money hand over fist. The other one you want to do, though, is something like become that eSport where people are playing it to get good, people are playing it because they want to try out that stuff. It was the StarCraft community that made StarCraft II an amazing eSport because they had casters, they had people who would be like, okay, today I'm gonna show you how to kill a person in five moves and then now go out and test it in the, and then you'd go and play casual. And if you knew the killer for that move, you could destroy them and piss people off, but that's neither here nor there. But you know, that's the kind of model that's making money for these. And every once in a while, somebody comes up with a new idea like, hey, give it away free and just watch how many people play it, Fortnite, and so on. And, and those make money. But as the guy, you're always trying to really duplicate what's already been done because it's safe. And I think that's why Overwatch, they took one look at it and they said, what is this? How can we make this a big money maker? And they thought the answer was esports, but I disagree. I um I watched I the video that was explained. It, it basically it explained like the issues with pro players in league right now because they have to, the meta changes so, so frequently change. that they actually they have to sit there and scrim for thirteen hours a day and they can't stream. And I think someone said there was a correlation between high skilled players streaming and people wanting to play the game because when you see someone that like let's say like Tyler uh, one. Any, any, well, he's not even pro. Like, if, if no, you were to no, watch, that's what I'm saying. He's but, kill, he's making more money than professional League of Legends players, and he's nowhere near the skill but, level for it. But sure, and, and the thing is, is though he gets, he makes it look easy. He makes it look fun, which he goes, "Hey, I want to play Draven. Hey, I want to learn how to play Draven." Now you, you, now you're playing League of Legends, trying to make your Draven game way better. And they, that's just kind of an interesting fact to see a correlation between that. Like someone yeah. really good at something is also now driving people to play the game. I, I think there's going to be a shift. I think for some reason, gaming has, has, has gone from like, let's play this game to have fun to like this hyper competitive atmosphere because yeah. they see games where like, well, you got to be number one. Like no one ever was. And oh my God, you'll be the next Shroud, the next it, Ninja. Like no one... No it's one like wants a to... false replayability is what it is. Yes, right. it's, 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 it's minimums in terms of like gaming creation with maximums in terms of replayability yeah. because like, oh, you, you, you finally got that chicken dinner in PUBG. You finally got that uh, Fortnite victory. Cool. Do it again yeah, a million cool. times. There's no reason to do it. 
the, the prime example is I just finished Witcher 3, Blood and Wine. And there have been few times in my life where I've completed a game and I've just sat back and was like, wow, yeah. that was amazing. I've put in 100 hours, 101 hours into The Witcher 3. And I thought to myself, like, I didn't think to myself, you know, all right, let's do it again. I didn't think to myself, like, uh, you know, uh, am I the best Witcher player? I thought, to, thought to myself, not only was that an absolute, like, it's worth the money hand over fist, but what a great game. What an enjoyable experience I had. I've never felt like that with PUBG, with League of Legends, with, uh, with uh, uh, Fortnite. There, there have been very few games I felt like that about where I thought the, it was it was storytelling at its finest mixed with awesome gameplay not necessarily graphics because one of my favorite games of all time is final fantasy 10 and that's not really a graphically impressive game but the story yeah. elements and stuff are there for me so for me it's like if i had a world full of witcher threes i would i would just cumulatively bust my load <laughs> if i had a world full of Fortnites, i'd probably stop gaming yeah yeah i'm with you i mean that's It'd be kind of cool to see Blizzard, though, come out with a story-driven game. I mean, that's essentially what Warcraft was. It was a story-driven game. Guardians, you, you, yes. Yeah, you, you follow you follow Illidan, you follow Lich King, you follow all that crap. But it'd be kind of cool to get kind of like a Witcher game from them. I mean, it'd be like a weird one-off World of Warcraft meets just Warcraft. Tell, you know what I'm tell saying? The story, yeah, like tell the story of Thul or something like that from you know, first they have, person. They have That'd be such awesome. a deep pool of characters that they can just, I don't know. Right. I, it'd be kind of cool to be able to do that. If they did an RPG, though, would you want them to do it on an IP that they already have, like a Warcraft, a Starcraft, or it something would, like that? Or would you want them to do an, a new one? One would of the be, biggest it, ghost wares that's been talked about, thought about, even at one point they said something about, and then they never pulled it off. Was StarCraft Ghost, which was supposed yeah. to be a first-person StarCraft, for Nova, right? For Nova, no, 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 yeah, like way back in the day, yeah, like before StarCraft too. Always yeah. would have loved to have actually seen that happen. I think that had been a good, good IP. There's alpha footage of that game out, like yeah. on YouTube and stuff. They even had like a cinematic trailer for it to hype it up. That was like one of the more dope cinematic trailers they ever made. Yeah, back yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> and you know how good it was because here it is six years some later and we're still talking about it. But it did the game never came to play. So, you know, what are you going to do? But yeah, I'd love to see. I, I think they've got enough IP already. If they came up with a new one, I'd be up to seeing it too. But I'd love to see them revisit some of those IPs from another direction. Well, that's that's technically what they're missing right now. Think about it. RTS they have. The card game they have. MMO they have. Shooter yeah. they have. They don't have... If they came out with a solid RPG, whether or not it's like in the same IP as like Warcraft or Starcraft or whatever, but if they brought out a solid RPG, and I mean, you can micro microtransaction the shit out of it because I know that's what Activision wants Blizzard to do. How can we monetize from it? Yeah. They're EA... They're EA, but they actually put forth good products. So it's like everyone kind of can bite the yeah, bullet. Yeah, give them a pass. Yeah, EA produces dog shit and then tries to sell you more dog shit. Blizzard will give you diamonds and then say you can keep buying more diamonds if you want. You're like, all right, fuck it. You know, it's <laughs> worth my money at least. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would, I would love to see something like that. That being said, with CD Projekt Red, oh, they're God. killing it. Loving them, loving I, them. I, I wasn't really hyped for Cyberpunk. Like I, I was, I was hyped for Cyberpunk. Oh. But after I played Witcher Three, I'm like, "Fuck me, dude! I need some Cyberpunk right now. I need more footage. I want. I, I, I YouTubed as much as I could on it. I Googled as much as I could on it. Like, there's so little information. They're doing I'm a just, good job keeping it, keeping it bare bones. Hush, hush. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I would love to see just gameplay. I don't know how they're going to handle that. Like, you know, like with uh, Bethesda doing something like Skyrim and then doing something like Fallout where it's it's kind of like the same <clears throat> engine but a completely different game, right? Oh, I didn't send you that video. No! You could have oh, so much to talk with, about. With Fallout? It's yeah, a 40-minute yeah. video. I sent it to Chills and Chills like, uh, Chills like 12 minutes in was like, I'm buying the game now. Yeah. Yeah. Send that to me. I would love to see it. Next episode, we'll talk about I mean, it. We'll do a fucking episode of just Fallout. Yeah. Oh, uh, if I may, going back a few topics a second ago or whatever, I, I actually heard something that intrigues me to some end. A buddy of mine is a professor at a university, and he actually has been approached about their from the faculty, like not external people. The school is going to become the third school 
to offer an esports program. And they are asking him, like, would you be at least a, a sponsor or would you be a, a coach or whatever? And I think that's, I think that shit's is stupid. It bad? I don't know, man. Is I don't, it? I don't think, I don't think you need a, a proper education for video games. Just like I, I don't, don't think you need a proper education. You don't need education. it for football? You don't but need you don't, it for hockey? But you don't. But oh, you mean you mean they're gonna offer like esports teams like scholarships? Yes. Oh, I thought you meant like they were gonna offer like programs. Be like, no. how to get better at Fortnite for no, your degree? No, no, no. Understand? We're talking about a team that makes money for the school playing esports competitively against other schools. I think it's only a matter of time. I, I, I think I, I think that needs to happen. I, I, I don't know why it wouldn't happen. I mean, it's just another way for colleges to dip into the esports revenue. I mean, I don't know how much that revenue is, but money is money. I mean, right? Here's and five thousand dollars. Well, here, exactly. Five thousand dollars. You don't have forward. to build a stadium. You don't have to buy safety equipment. You got to buy oh. computers, which most com uh, colleges, you know, kind of required anyway. So, oh, it's like two grand and, a computer, and then you're you're good to go, right. depending the, on what the, game it is. the actual cost of like holding like an esports uh, like uh, event versus like a would surprise you, like to have maintain and create a football team is a huge expense. For a school, the only reason they do it is because of the return that they get. I mean, the NCAA kills it. You know what I mean? If you're in the SEC or or the Big Ten, you're making more money off your football teams than you are off tuition. Like that's the that's the goal for colleges. Like they don't say it. I mean, we don't. I don't want to. I don't want to go down this topic, and that's why. Like I think <laughs> college right. athletes should be getting paid. But you know, if like you look at the actual amount of money these universities are making from student athletes, dude. That's where the fucking money's at. I need to make a school. I need to get a football team. <laughs> I'm like, listen, I'll give you guys school. education for free. I'll, it's the boot, it's the hard knock boot <laughs> school. Teach you how to eat ass and and yeah, we'll get you oh, a degree. Right. <laughs> anyway, but uh, no, no. So I, I I think that's definitely the future. I think it's only a matter of time, especially because of things like Twitch and because of people like Ninja, which are really kind of putting gaming more mainstream. And now you got like. Fucking Kim Kardashian tweeting about Fortnite. I wish it wasn't Fortnite she was tweeting about, but, you know, whatever. Whatever the gaming is, you're starting to see, like, the nerds really inherit the earth, right? Now it's like people talk about Ninja the way they talk about, like, LeBron. They're like, oh, man, Ninja's like the, the epitome of Fortnite, yada, 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 what have you. And that's kind of cool. I think it's, like I said, only a part of the future. But uh, I think if he doesn't hop on it, another school will. I mean, I know oh. – I, I know he's going to do it. I, it's it's really just, I think that's cool that that started. Like, I, you know, in case people hadn't heard it, I'm talking about it when I can because I think it's cool. I'm also trying to put together my resume for why I, too, can be a coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be a dope job. Was that? I, I don't, I, I don't, don't know. I don't inherently think that. Like there's so much there's so much backlash for like parents who are like, yeah, I hired a coach for my kid to play Fortnite better. I mean, you hire your kid uh, a coach to play t-ball. I mean, your kid sucked yeah. at t-ball, so get him a coach. Yeah. He sucked at Fortnite. Cause what was the difference between doing that or, like, taking him to soccer? Yeah, I mean, Jesus. What, I don't know. Maybe the next Ronaldo? Like, it'll be interesting to see just America's views on esports and video games, period. Like, I, that was such a – that's such a weird – we're, like, the last area to really frown upon people playing video games. Like it's starting to turn around. It's getting, like, it's turning, but yeah. I, I think I think the turning point is going to be when you realize that there's no negatives to it in the sense of like physical pain. Like oh, so yeah. in every other sport you have injuries. You have, you know, football's got a really bad concussion complex and and like the longevity of the athletes. But in esports, I mean as long as you stay on it, like what's the worst someone's going to get a headache? Oh, I mean, I played video games for eight hours and I, I got to really yeah. take a nap, you know, like maybe the only thing that would be terrible is like People have carpal tunnel, dude. You don't yeah, even like, know really, about that tunnel. Ben Gay, Ben Gay will make a killing. <laughs> ben, ben Gay sponsored events. Ben Gay, <laughs> so good. The Ben Gay Stadium. <laughs> I, I don't you... know. I, I personally think that when I have kids one day and I'm like 40, 50 years old, I'm gonna have to tell them like, man, I remember back when like it was only Twitch was your streaming platform for the for the most part. You know what I mean? I'm I'm sure yeah. that I think, especially when you look at like, with the exception of football, I'm talking about like your Euro European football, like soccer. Um, turnouts for events sporting events are actually on the decline for all of them for nba for football for baseball for all of them 
And I don't know if that's like a change of the times. I don't know if that's a change because esports is taking more prevalence. Or maybe people just don't give a shit about sports anymore, which could also be a thing. Did you say viewership or people trying to play college sports? Viewership. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, there, there will always be. Listen. Yeah, no, there will always be players. There will always no, be I know. Athletes, trust what, me. What is soccer? I, I, I think the viewership problem, though, is probably just about who's got the lock on how they distribute it and the fact that those aren't updating with the times i think i think it's more i think it's more political right now though do I think you? it's like kneeling during the flag yeah season. well i, I that's that. but here's the problem here's the problem when your league is like for the u.s or whatever like that you you, you know your demographic should be everybody you don't want to segregate anybody and that's what's causing a lot of rift right now in sports right now is because like these athletes that you're paying millions and millions of dollars are now being outspoken and, and kind of causing uh, dissension between the viewers, which before they would be like, I watch X team because of the players. Now they're like, I watch X team because they don't kneel or I don't, you know, what have you. It's just right. off the topic, but it's something to think about. But uh, I do want to get on this topic eventually. And that is do it. what we think about seven days to die. A five-year alpha game that, that we've been playing a shit ton of lately, and I gotta be honest with you, I'm finding a, a lot of enjoyment out of it. So, <laughs> like, I don't awful. know if enjoyment is the word. <laughs> I was just waiting for Doc to go I, ahead. I, mean, I got, I've got a, so so I've played it solo. I I've quit playing with you guys, not out of any other reason except our schedules just aren't meshing, right? But the game is good uh, because I've recently started it. I I haven't seen how it progresses late, late, late game, but it seems like one of those games that's like really hard to begin with, and it's getting easier with time to the point where there's not much left to do. Do you feel differently? I'm coming out of nowhere. Turn, turn that difficulty up and you tell me. That's yeah. the glory of that game. That, that game can get easy if you allow it. Like if you turn it to one difficulty – by day 10, you've pretty much beat it. But the thing is, right? we haven't got to the point where we need auto turrets. I've seen people needing I've auto turrets. I've seen waves that was, like, crazy. Yeah, so I've seen waves at, like, day 400 where, like, they're funneling them in. They have electrical wires. They have, like, the high-end shit. They got auto turrets. And they're still shooting with guns and throwing dynamite and shit. So, I mean, that so, game can get really intense. So let me throw the other one tiny unusual insight that I have for it. You look at the longer term games, and I get that they're not in alpha, which helps them, like Minecraft or anything there's, else that you play. There's no time. late game in Minecraft. Space engineers. I agree with that. I there's a that. dragon. There is the yeah, dragon. Yeah, and then after that dragon. But, but, so that's what I'm saying. Like the, the reason why I like Seven Days to Die is this model of increasingly difficult waves. Yep. Like, so, yep. what is what is end game? When you think about the term end game, what is that? Is is that content that you have to do? If that's the case, then end game starts from day seven. Right. The more the oh. more you increase, the more uh, technologically advanced you get, the harder the game's getting in comparison. So it's yeah. it's you're honestly you're not. I I've never felt like a wave was easy. I felt like if I don't progress the waves will overrun me eventually. There was never a chance where, or there was ever a time where I felt overpowered. And when we changed the difficulty, Ted, you can attest to this. When we changed the difficulty from two, because at two, I was getting kind of bored. I was like, man, this is getting easy. And then we changed it to three. It was like, okay, we're getting hordes like every night now almost. Like there was, there's screamers left and right. The, the yeah. difficulty of the game. The, and the horde night, the types of zombies we were getting were just like, you weren't getting your regular runners. You were getting your spitters, your spiders, your radiated, your whites. I mean, CT's house lasted all of 30 seconds <laughs> on our way. It lasted you blew all up with dynamite, seconds. all right? It wasn't no, his no, fault. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, but other than that. We helped him get ready. We helped him get ready for horde night, and it lasted all of 30 seconds. I was blown away by how quickly they broke through. It wasn't I even close. Yeah, I, the point I was going to make, which is not, uh, you know, whatever, is I'm surprised that their servers don't have available some kind of community-created control program better than the ones that they have. Yeah, That's all I was going to say. That's kind of an indication to me that either the whole community has said something like not worth playing multiplayer for very long or making changes as you go or whatever, uh, th that's the only insight I was actually going to come up with is I'm very surprised that the, if you go look at the other ones that I was mentioning, somebody has come up with a free or a $2 thing.
thing that controls every aspect of that and is real nice and easy with a GUI. And you go look at what is the best one right now is like uh, seven days rat or something like that. I don't remember. But well, uh, Raven Raven says, I feel the same way about a five year alpha game as I do when men are about a five year with women for five years and they still haven't popped the question. <laughs> but B actually asked a really good question. Yeah. He asked a really good question. He says, what's better, being a complete and optimized uh, and released later or a game that is incomplete and released early? Now, I think, I think Seven Days to Die is a bad example of that because I don't think any game should take five years to get optimized. And I, I think that's just no offense, but I don't know the size of the team. I don't know the size of the company. I'm pretty sure it was like an so, indie developer before. So, uh, minus Germany, who has pretty much said the uh, what is it? No one can buy early access alpha games, or uh, they have like a time limit mm -hmm. on their games for people to like sell in Germany. I I haven't seen um, Seven Days to Die ask me to buy skins, uh, microtransactions. They haven't asked me to do any of this stuff. So to me, their early release is fine. P yeah. PUBG, on the other hand, like all these other companies that are early access. Well, well PUBG, PUBG is now released. It's been released sure, for a but, while. But what I'm saying is all these companies that pretty much drag their balls in the sand and expect us to pay more money and keep it an early release are really taking advantage of a system. That's well, you all. know, you want to know why they do early access, right? Or, or alpha well, testing. Is, well, free is beta can, testing. Well, well, free beta because testing. Because they can get the testing. community to tell them how to de what to develop next. No, not even that. It's, it's all about patching and your ability to release patches whenever the fuck you want to. When you're True. a fully fledged game, when you release patch notes and stuff like that, you have to really hold to them and really hold to the dates and things like that. But when you're in early access, Fortnite can, can release a patch where they offer fucking self propelled rockets that are game breakingly OP. And if anyone bats an eye to it, they can be like, oh, well, it's an alpha. We're learning early access. You know what I mean? Or they can do a series of patches and do whatever the fuck they want, whatever the fuck they want to, even though they're a bigger end game. Like imagine this, for instance, if Blizzard were to come out with, with a game, even though Activision's publicly traded, every patch, everything that Blizzard does to any of their games, they have to release a statement about it. To the, to, for, for the shareholders, for the equities at stake, right? Same thing with EA. Same thing with all these companies, these gaming companies that are now becoming publicly traded because they understand that it's an influx of capital to then produce games, right? But when you're early access, when you're alpha, you don't have to do shit. You can release whatever you want, whenever you want to, regardless if it's game-breaking, regardless if it's unoptimized. And if it comes out like shit, you can say, hey, we'll, we'll take it back. We'll revert it to a patch. We're good. We're learning. You have that escape. And the problem right. is a lot of these games now, they don't have the proper funding and it's, it's a catch 22, right? So many game companies don't have the proper funding to actually get out with a fully fledged game release. They don't have the time and the resources to fix every bug. So they do an early access and get some of that cash flow to come in and then produce a finished product. So like if you, if you say that, you know, let's outlaw early accesses, we wouldn't get a lot of the games that we've gotten. However, at the same flip of the coin, you're getting some of these bigger companies now that are just completely running rampant with it. And Fortnite, honestly, is is the biggest. They were eight years. Well, well, yeah. they, well they, leave, their aside, PV, leave aside the their development. PV, their PvP was early access. They have a fully fledged game that's PvE that they yeah. can release. Right. There's no reason Fortnite, which is arguably the biggest game, the biggest BR game right now, the biggest esports game for sure, in my opinion. Uh, it's been killing it on Twitch for just multiple months. You can't tell me that that's an early access. That's a fully fledged game, homie. You're killing other fully fledged games. Yeah, I I get that. I, and you think of some of the other ones. I love this about alphas, and I bought into a lot of them four years ago uh, before it was really quite as prevalent as it is now. Uh, Space Engineers, some of those ones. Kerbal Space Program. What I loved about them was you get tired of it because it's maybe not complete and you walk away, you go play something else for four months, you come back. It's like a whole different game. You get to start over again. You just bought a second game or a sequel to that game almost, right? So that part of it, I like about alphas. I'll continue buying pre-alpha games because of that aspect of it. Not every one of them does it right. Sometimes you get burned, but, you know, you, you I like that in? aspect. Do you have welding glasses on? It's from my gla it's from my glaucoma. All right, talk about it. 
What, is that, even, what, is that, what does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know. These are old grandma glasses, dude. I bought it's them glaucoma. for a... <laughs> oh my Pressure god. Pressure inside of the eyeball. Oh, I don't explain it to him. Oh, <laughs> Let him sorry. figure it out when he's older. I'll, okay? I'll it. I'll give a fuck. No, he won't. Right. I, I don't it know. It means I, you can get a medical marijuana card. That's what it means. Okay, just no. that's that's it. I, I personally am a big fan of understanding what I'm purchasing and knowing what I buy. But obviously, you can't really make a complaint towards a game like Fortnite because it is technically free to play. There is no investment on your half, right? So, to that extent, you can't really get mad at like Fortnite. You could get mad at like PUBG, which was like an early access and charge thirty dollars for it. But they kind of redeemed themselves in my eyes when they went. F- like fully fledged game and kept the price at thirty dollars. Like yeah. that was pretty. You know, they could have easily said, "Okay, it's a it's a fully released game now." Boom, sixty bucks. Put that markup on there, but they realized. And they could have made everyone pay it again too. I, I don't remember having to pay a second price. Yeah, true. Or, or maybe like Doc was saying, like there'd be like a battle pass or something. That's one of the things I do like about PUBG. There's no battle pass. I love yeah. that I, shit about that. I inherently like the battle pass idea. Why? Everybody's entitled to be wrong. It's cool. <laughs> why? why? I mean, okay. No, so, no, 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 no. I, I don't know why. I, I just. It's think... a, it's a free game. It's something you don't have to have. Line, me and Line right. both. Me and Line. No, 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 sorry, sorry, no, sorry. I was thinking not for Fortnite. Pass not for Fortnite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not for yeah. Fortnite. No, no. I'm saying if it's a free to play yeah. game and they offer a battle pass idea. That's I was talking. To, I was talking That's to true. someone, uh, where they were telling me about a game where they're going to do a battle pass style thing, essentially. Um, and I can't remember the name of the game or who I talked to. Did that even happen? I, was I it pro- on a Friday? Was it on a Thursday? With- it might have been. Did you <laughs> chug a bottle of wine I don't and know. throw up? It might have been <laughs> when I was sipping whiskey. Who fucking knows? Um, uh, I mean, um, what were we talking about? Where were we? <laughs> we were talking about battle passes and battlegrounds games. Oh. It's 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 such a weird dynamic. I, I feel like five years ago, gaming was just so much simpler with oh. like. I was going to say, the thing that I, I don't like, I, I like Bethesda and I like what they're doing. I don't like pre-ordering a game and then being able to beta, beta test it. I think, that's yeah. just, I think that's just fancy footwork to getting you to buy the game early. Because um, it, it could Early be, access without calling it early access. Yeah, it's, it's definitely early access because they're like, come break our game. <laughs> when they're really like, no, please come break our game. Like, we, we don't know. What because, we're doing, and we want to have a smooth so, launch. So that video that I linked to you, they basically explain that they brought two guys in to completely overhaul their engine. Their engine is 100% different to enable multiplayer people. And they actually go in to explain, like, so now when you're – they go, you're a linear guy in our game generally, and you have options at different places. Now we have to make it to where there's multiple people, and all of them have to interact in a certain way. And they brought in these two guys, and, and that's what they did. So I, I get why they want people to break their game. However, I'm not paying you to break your game. You can yeah. you can offer you can do what happened to that shit. It was like you sign like Heroes of the Storm. They're like sign up for Heroes of the Storm. You'll get early access. It's free, but you you have to you only get like like there was a time schedule. I love right. that. They were like I remember there were two weeks while I was down. I didn't know what to do with my life. Like they were like we have to go down for maintenance. Blah blah blah. We'll be back up at the beginning of the year. Perfect. Free game, free access, and then you you paid for it if you wanted to. Well, it, it was microtransactions and all that stuff. But anyway, I used to sign up for games that way. That's how I did Firefall. That's how I did a whole bunch of stuff. It's like all of a sudden one company was like, oh, we can sell early access. And then there you go. Just the way DLC went. Oh, we can sell DLC? Here we go. No more free DLC for anyone. Yeah, no, dude. It's just... Uh, and and the, since the arrival of the alpha has been the death of the demo button... Like, you, whatever you use to get your games, you used to be, like, a lot of times there'd be a come check magazine. out our free demo or from the magazines or yeah. whatever. I never you played a that. full game of, of Blitz. I never yeah. played a full game of Blitz. I only played the demo. Yeah. But, I mean, that is gone now. Like, very rarely do you ever find a, a demo available for a game. There are exceptions, and I know that. It's fewer. It's fewer. They're not gone, gone, but they're dying. And it's because more often than not, you get the, hey, we're in the first week of making yeah, our game. But, but, we're going to but, charge but, $15 for it, and you get the full version. But here's the thing. No, no, but here's the thing, though. Demos, for the most part, were never supposed to be, like, betas for a game. Demos were a lot of times... Yeah, to get the people to buy them. To, to get people to buy yeah. them. But in today's age, when you have, you know, everyone's making a YouTube channel about 
gameplay of a game and whether or not you should buy it and, and on Twitch streaming, you don't need demos. Demos have kind of become obsolete at this point. Or at the very least, you do maybe an early access or maybe like a free to play, like like the way Steam does it, where you could get for honor for free for the next two days. That could be technically cool. quote unquote a demo. Yeah. Or You're the right. way World of Warcraft does it, where like you could play the free to play version up to level twenty. Like demos were a, a median, a medium of like yeah. marketing. They were never supposed to be designed. Like by, by by the time you have a demo, your game's pretty much done. Right. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That's that was true. that was that was a, a an old age. Uh, that was. So I that was a, never played I the pro thing of Blitz. overnight, buddy. I am old. You know, I grandpa's got uh, pills to go take. No, no, and and you bring an interesting perspective to it. Like you, you know, you have that vision that me and Ted don't necessarily have. You were there for for a lot of, if not all of, what, gaming in general. Not not all of gaming. What I'm trying to say, but like, yeah. the modernization and and the flow into being mainstream of gaming. From from, in my opinion, one of the games to really start doing it was like EverQuest to get like a mass following into it, yeah. and then World of Warcraft took that torch and just ran with it, and now we're here, 2018, where it may not be an MMORPG that's doing it, but Fortnite is breaking like just borders left and right on mm -hmm. what's a, a cool uh, people that I people that I never knew played video games and never did play video games talk about Fortnite like the way they talk about FIFA and stuff like that, like. <sighs> These are like yeah. the cool games to play. If you're good at FIFA, if you're good at Fortnite, you're cool. You know what I mean? That's, I think, the key to money, making your game mainstream cool. If you can do that, you're going right. to kill it. Which um, goes back to way, way, way back where we were talking about as the eSport model is a way to introduce that game being cool to Pam. I don't, I don't think it has anything so to do with eSports. I think it has no. nothing to do with eSports. You I think you'd be I think the same way you'd be surprised about casual fans of real sports not knowing shit, the casual video gamer doesn't know shit. I don't oh, yeah. know half I don't know 90% of the tw Twitch streamers. I don't know a single professional gamer. Like I have no idea. I could not name to you one professional League of Legends player. Not one professional Overwatch player. I know Ninja. And I know Shroud. These are the only people I know. I think you'd be surprised well, he is a at the lack game, of but... uh, the lack of knowledge. I, <laughs> we're professional. <games. laughs> no, no, Stroud is. He was a. Pro, he was a. He, he, apparently, same, he, the same with same with Ninja. He was on the uh, Halo, uh, the the pro Halo scene. So like, I'm not saying these guys. I know them as professional gamers. I know them as Twitch streamers. I right. do not know a single professional gamer. Mm. I could you, could you name one to me? Well, well I'm a cutie pie. Is that a? I don't know if you're telling me like you're a cutie pie or if that's no. Like a I, no, that's a real guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when do you think yeah. the Fortnite hype? And this is what we'll we'll end this the the discussion on this, and then we'll do our plugs. But uh, B Salt asked another good question. When do you think the Fortnite hype will die down, or will it die down? Like, do you still see it at the top of Twitch in a year from now? I say no. Oh. I, uh, I I don't know, man. So like. So there's like two factors that I that I can I can see them staying at the top for a little bit longer. Um, League has obviously gone down, but that was like it's been like eight years since it initially started. and It used to be number one. I noticed that they're kind of trying to follow the trend of League. League got their foot into the esports scene. I think they've been trying to do like not maybe esports, but they've been trying to hold like celebrity tournaments and stuff like that. Keep pu you know public interest in it. The biggest thing though is basically like YouTube. People get famous and rich off YouTube quickly based on if their videos are watched by kids. Now, mm -hmm. every kid's got a phone. Every kid's got a tablet, a TV. They got Roku. They got all that crap on their Twitch app on there. Kids are watching Twitch at night. They're, they're there. I, I've Trust me. They wander on my stream every once in a while. So, so what, are you, I, what are you saying, though? Like I, you're saying I'm, saying, I'm saying that enough the, – the age – the age range on that game is so broad that, that I'm you're just going to matriculate down. It's, it's going to get just, old for us, but it's going to still not be for fresh. Them. For them. Yeah. I, I doubt it. Until the next biggest thing comes. Until something that can knock it off the podium, I don't think, I, I I think, think we'll see Fortnite at the top. I think we'll be blindsided by another game the same way Fortnite blindsided PUBG. I remember like I when agree. PUBG was killing it, we all thought, man... What's going to kill PUBG? Do you remember like just a year ago when <laughs> everyone was talking about nothing but PUBG? PUBG was killing the game. Everyone was talking about, hey, do you play PUBG? Now, 
like no one really talks about PUBG. Other than, Shroud is literally keeping that game alive on Twitch in the top ten. If Shroud's not streaming, it's like seven, eight, nine. Uh, there's days where Islands of Nine is above it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's eventually like that going to happen with Fortnite. Islands of Nine is good. I, like I think it. I think it has a lot of pra- uh, promise. So and that that might be the game that that takes Fortnite. I think Fortnite's very casual friendly, but if they continue to make it hyper competitive, that's going to eliminate. I I know a the lot game, of people. The, the game's not meant to be hyper competitive. There's too much RNG in that game. There's no way. But, I, you, I, but people do take it like, dude. There's literally schools uh, and tutors about it's... making your kid better at Fortnite. But that and that's the reason why I don't see the hype dying down. Colleges are backing this shit. People mm-hmm. are starting to back it. I'm this is what League did. Samsung, this is what Samsung, League did. Samsung made a phone. And, like, their main marketing ploy was, like, made Fortnite. for Fortnite, Fortnite mobile, in, like, in mind. I, I just thought to myself, like, that's so stupid. That's so stupid. No parent is going to buy a phone for their kid. To, you know what I mean? Like, maybe I'm wrong, man. Maybe maybe they got marketing guys left and right that 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 did some calculations and said there's a there's a market for this shit. I just I don't I would never base a product a hardware product on a. Oh trend. no, I, I agree. No, I, I agree. Like, agree. So. Yeah, and T story. The reason why I play I play Isles and Nine is because I just I can't go back to PUBG. I, I just can't go. I, I'm it, it's a it's an ex girlfriend and I moved states away. I can't. I can't play that game anymore. Uh, what, Islands of Nine? No, no, no. PUBG. He said I, I still play PUBG nightly, but I hear Ion comes close to like the game, the gunplay, and I would agree. But I, I just can't play PUBG anymore. I have to play Isle of Nines was fresh for me. Yeah, I, I can't play PUBG. I personally, it's funny that I'm talking this much about Battlegrounds games. I'm done with Battlegrounds done. games. Yeah, I've I've oversaturated myself. I have over. I, this this podcast is only gonna go is supposed to go for an hour, but do you guys mind if we go for like an hour and fifteen? Because I still want to do plugs too. Yeah, Ted, uh, does that work for you? Yeah, I'm I just good. have I have someone coming over here soon, so all right, all right we'll end it soon. I just plug first. Yeah, well, for me personally, I think with Battlegrounds and uh, battle sorry Battlegrounds with Battlefield and Call of Duty coming out, offering a Battlegrounds option, I'm interested to see what a triple A title can produce. But I don't know if I will necessarily give a fuck. I'm yeah. really, I the reason why I love uh, Rainbow Six is because all that bullshit is out. You yeah. play a couple rounds and you're done. You, you, you get on for like six, seven minutes. You, you do a, a session, you're done. They have a pretty fair ranked system that's pretty pretty well done, and I enjoy it. It's a very well done game, and I and I get my FPS itch from that now. But like I, I, I try to go back to PUBG. I, I play a game or two, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm just not feeling it. I don't care. So, CT was telling me like, oh man, I played Fortnite the other day, and it was actually kind of fun. Like, you know, they they did a lot of updates to the game, and it's enjoyable. I was like, yeah, well, when when you logged 500 hours into PUBG and about 400 hours into Fortnite, I really don't give a shit what upgrade or patch they're on anymore. I, I I'm done. I I bought Islands of Nine, and I enjoyed Islands of Nine, but I could honestly tell you, I've only played about 20 hours of it. Because I'm done with Battlegrounds games, unless Except, they do something groundbreaking. I don't know. I, no, I'll definitely, I'll definitely tune in. I mean, Lion's gonna buy the new Call of Duty, and I'm, they have a, they have a Battleground in that, right? That's a BR in there. Yeah, the, the next. I'm, the, I'm sure he'll play it. If if it seems appealing to me, maybe, but I, I, I highly doubt it. I'm, I'm really liking. Uh, I agree. I am, I am so full on FPS. Uh, it has to be, it have to be like, like I said, a story driven game with a first person aspect. Then maybe I'll play it, but yeah. any any kind like of a like Halo, or yeah, something yeah, like that. something like that. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't even have to be completely FPS, but like what the division was supposed to be, not yeah. what it was. The, vi- the division might be the next FPS game that I I really decide or Fallout seventy six, but you know that's more building than that I'm, is. I, I'll be honest with you, the only reason Fallout seventy six intrigues me is because I have the ability to play with you guys. If it was a single player game, I probably wouldn't play. Yeah, I got you. All right. On that note, episode three in the books. Gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I will give you a moment now. We will give one minute to each of our panelists on why we should follow you and view you and why we should unfollow the other two panelists. <laughs> just, just a second. I, I think before that we should say we should each get a minute and 15, all of us sharing, or 33 seconds, 
sharing Yeti's time that he's not using. <laughs> <laughs> that he would have. By the way, if you, if you don't know who Squatting Yeti is, he's supposed to join us. He's supposed to be our fourth. You guys should go unfollow him if you follow him. Right, unfollow <laughs> immediately. All yeah. right, first, we'll go with special guest, Doc Skills. Doc, you have one minute on the clock, starting now. Oh, right, good. Then on that note, uh, you know, all I'm doing right now, my my stream has become uh, me looking around technology, figuring out what I can do. Things that are about to start for me. I'm going to be doing a GM as uh, for 5th edition D&D, and I really think there's going to be a fun opportunity do some voice work, do some other stuff in that. I'd love to see you come over and see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know you're going to get an invite. Give me a little bit of time to get things in place, baby. Um, but I'll be recruiting, and I'll be recruiting from chat occasionally, too. So uh, that's what I'm going for. And, of course, I'm going to start talking about what I do with uh, servers and how to make those work for people, too. Uh, that's mine. There you go. <laughs> Maybe a few extra. Nice, Doc. All right, Ted. One minute on the clock. Uh, get... Wait. Oh, okay. Hey, guys. I'm Ted Farkas. I'm your friendly neighborhood alcoholic. Um, I don't know. I do a lot of stuff. I play a lot of games. Uh, I do a lot of creative IRL stuff. If you want to see me buy random cheap Chinese stuff and help me pick out an outfit, hey, we do that on Thursdays sometimes. Sometimes I build confetti cannons. Uh, I do some soldering. I'm a handyman, all right? Plus, I got funny buttons that make noise or something, if that's what you're into. Um, how much time do I have left? You have 28 seconds. And then, so, in 1990, my mother squeezed me out, and uh, it was the worst day of my life. Um, I didn't ask to be born. But I grew into this beautiful, balding man you see here, and I, and I grabbed my sickle, and I said, hey, we're going to go to Twitch. And I met these guys, and I don't know where this story is going, but... If it intrigued you at all, follow my channel. Yeah, <laughs> get it. In. I'm a clap. I'm a clap. Uh, I, I only need five seconds for myself, and then I'm gonna shit on everybody else for 55 seconds. Oh, I got that part where we don't were don't forget to follow me at the Booty Messiah. The literally the stream we're watching right now. Um, Doc Skills is a Thanos ass look at motherfucker <laughs> trying to clap cheeks and snap fingers so unfollow him and Ted looks like he has an island on his head and he has to wear a fake beard because he can barely grow a real beard oh, show us your oh, real oh, face <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I need this beard because it's so luscious I gotta protect it oh, it looks beautiful also if you have the squatting yeti Followed, or if you're subscribed to him, how dare you? Not only was that man supposed to be here tonight, he said, and I quote, I hate Doc Skills' face and Ted smells. <laughs> Words That's he said false. straight from the, the teat of the cow. I have 15 seconds left. What else can I say? Um, uh, you both look stupid and make little money. I'm out. <laughs> uh, I'll finish with thanks, Wraith, for putting me on a whole different level than these two. <laughs> I get my own little bottom shelf. Yes. Which is probably appropriate. The power bottom. <laughs> yeah, on the power. Which way am I supposed to touch booty? Can we touch hands? I think I'm here to you. Oh wait. Oh I think. Oh, oh no, I'm doing it the wrong way. <laughs> Shit. No, I'm doing it the wrong way. Fuck. Touch me. There's a delay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. Wraith, end the stream. We're done. We're yeah, done. this is... <laughs> We're done. Ted invaded Twitch with a sickle. You didn't hear me say that. Uh, I, I hope I hope Wraith isn't, like, asleep or something right now because he's the one who has OPS on. 